With love letters, I offer unadulterated, heartfelt gratitude to the writers, actors, comedians, and artists of all variety who have made this world richer through the light of their brilliance. Love Letters is a way for me to say thank you to these luminaries, to honor what is best in us all, and to shine a light on the people who help us rise. I offer you love letters for all these reasons, but also for the simple reason that this world is too free with critique and too stingy with compliment. And now, my 16th love letter, a letter for Margaret Atwood. Dear Margaret Atwood, all that follows is for Oryx and Crake. Thank you for snowman waking, but wishing he hadn't for a world of ruin and rubble and a zero hour when nobody knows the time. Thank you for sleeping in trees and scotch, for hoarding delicious things because they might never come again, and for fragments of sentences spoken out loud from books long gone, half-remembered words from a dead world. Thank you for green-eyed children, putting flotsam in a sack like mysterious artifacts, a piano key, a computer mouse, bits and bobs, and for their question, what have we found? And for Snowman's answer, these are things from before. Thank you for the sun as enemy and a broken watch as a device for communicating with the god in the sky. Thank you for wolvogs and pagoons and Methuselah mouse and all manner of hybrids and for remembering a time when the leaves on trees changed colors. Thank you for a bonfire of cows and sheep and pigs and a father saying, this is where it ends up. Thank you for plebe lands of paupers and high walls and compounds and fear of microbes and riots and ice cream in a bowl to make everything okay. Thank you for a mother gone renegade and oh so right and for corknut, a word that brings me such insane glee. I now use it every chance I get. Thank you for Snowman repeating lists of words as a form of comfort, which I have done my whole life. And for these words, not every word he recalled, but the ones I remember that sound like a sad, beautiful prayer when strung together. Incarnadine, seer, mephitic, maudlin, saturnine, lodestone, aphasia, a lack. Thank you for collecting old or forgotten words and keeping them safe, like rescuing lost children. Thank you for Oryx who saw the boys watching and knew what they wanted. For those who are forced to kneel, dreaming of standing. And for Oryx's left eye as a gateway and her silvery laugh. Thank you for the children of Oryx and the children of Crake, the myth of words held in an egg, and for Snowman, an unwilling storyteller, keeping all the details of his mythologies in order. Thank you for starving to death very slowly, male penguins presenting round stones as mating gifts, for people as walled spaces, and for the aching beauty and aching futility of pointless repinings. Thank you for studying arcane lore as an act of defiant accumulation of the superfluous, for the impossible reasoning of toast, and for the offensiveness of last year's adjectives. Thank you for the pleasure of neatness on shelves and the immense comfort of a small, furry animal to snuggle. Thank you for Extinctathon, that tragic game, 
and for the coelacanth symbols of the Grand Masters, whose minds are like search engines filled with the minutia of the decimated. Thank you for a hollow sound like the door of a vault closing, for Crake saying that the real game's being played in your head and that the point of winning is to inherit a wasteland. Thank you for reading the content of Crake's mind through the fridge magnet fragments he composed and for the wholesale horror and perfect savagery of perfectly logical conclusions. Thank you for screaming out loud in a dark bedroom and not remembering your dreams and for Crake who ended the world with a pill called Bliss Plus, a hemorrhagic after the orgy, which seems fitting somehow. Thank you for love and friendship as blinding and for devastating ends we should have seen but didn't, for listening but not hearing, and for the sentence we understand more than we know. Thank you for being stuck in the past, sinking down, and points of light disappearing one by one. Thank you for the great rearrangement and the great emptiness, and for Alex the parrot who said, I'm going away now. With immense gratitude for this book of endings and all the ways we leave each other, but also for ragged, naked hope in the ruins and for purring as a form of physical healing. Thank you, Margaret Atwood. All my best, Sarah D. Little. Up next, Ursula K. Le Guin.